Good evening, teacher Jorge. Hello, good evening. How are you? Uh, fine. I just waiting for the class. <laughs> okay, very good. How was your weekend? <laughs> really hard. I went to to get uh, to milk my house, my mm -hmm. my my cows, <laughs> uh -huh. because I went to La Union in a small farm that my family have, and the the work the 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 person who milked the cows mm -hmm. he was drunk and he couldn't milk the house. But I I learned when I was a child to build the house. Mm -hmm. it is it's it's right to say milk the house or the yellow back. Milk, yes, milk, milk it, yes. Milk, milk the cows, yes. Milk the cows. Yes, I milk the cows and my 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 hand was was really really calambre how I can say like a, like a tighter the this part of my <laughs> of my hand. Mm -hmm was really tired because uh, when i was to finish with the the, the 12 cows mm -hmm. i uh, i was too tired in my house and i my back <laughs> <laughs> yes. was bothering me <laughs> but at last i finished at 6 a.m we were finishing because the the person the the, the worker mm -hmm. that just was uh tightened the 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 little the little the little animal how could I say the becerro the little the little cow mm -hmm. they they tie to the they tie to the to the to the to one part of the cow of the of the, of the mother cow mm -hmm. and and while I am I am milking the house sitting in a small bank it's a small a small really small bank and I finish. We finish. We give the the meal to the to the person who who buy the meal every morning. Mm -hmm. And then I I began to say many things, many things, many things to fix the the. I have a tractor that that we on weekend I I got to move the tractor and and it's a machine for agriculture. And I because the. The I don't know how to say sacate the the, the grass the grass mm -hmm. uh, we cut some some branch of grass of grass and um, picar and and make small pieces of the grass in a way that the cow can eat eat this is is like a eno to prepare the eno for the for the cows. So you have to prepare it also. Yes, yes. But when they are drunk, then the when the worker are drunk is too dangerous because the machine has a big a knife. If 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 somebody is not really ready, he can lose the hands. Can 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 be uh, do an accident. Make an uh, make. I, I confuse with you using make and do. <laughs> uh, it is it can be an accident and a work accident so. yes an accident can happen right when yes they are... can happen. yes that's it okay so you what, were what very busy i i i, I were in the in la union mm -hmm. in olomega lake in the vicinity of the lake i was working over all saturday and on sun and monday and sunday mm -hmm. Okay, well, you were very busy. It sounds you were very, very, very busy. busy. But it relaxed me because all week I, I, I start, I, I spend studying and working, and then I relax when I go to the to the to the small farm. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. You you change everything and you try to relax. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's it. Very good, very good, Elio. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, ne I I never thought that you uh, hard you were you you were able to meal cows and all of that. <laughs> I ride horses too, and <laughs> I have a I have a horse to 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 ride. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, very interesting, very good, yeah. perfect. So we are going to start the class right now. We are going to finish with section three this this week. 
And we are going to have a little bit of a review about section one and section two. And uh, you didn't have any homework. So uh, we're going to continue. It seems that some of you don't feel very well. So no problem. If you don't feel very well, just let me know. And we are going to, you can just listen to the class, right? Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Zulma, Cesar, Hilda, Rafael, Marvin, Rodrigo, Elizabeth. Ciro, Sandra, and Diego. Thank you for being here. We are going to uh, finish right now the topics that we have pending. Let's see here. I don't know if you have any problem right now or any doubt about section three or about the platform. Do you have any, any doubt right now about any exercise? If you don't have any doubt, we can solve it in the... Uh, tomorrow or in the next days. This is the lifelong learning is the part that we are going to cover. So if you have any doubt also with the midterm exam, let me know and we will be able to to solve the problem. So uh, we're, teacher, yes. In the, in the midterm exam, I have some question because I, 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 I began, I began to with the, the, the with the exam, Yes. And then in some parts, I couldn't find, I tried to, to do many things, but I, I think that it's going to be later because maybe we need to study something. Or... Okay. So you are going to, you want me to check it later, right? Probably tomorrow. Uh, I think so. I think so because I don't know if it's, it's, my, it's my fellow, my, my classmate, uh has having the same problem that i have mm, or okay. maybe mm -hmm. okay perfect uh so if you have any doubt or tomorrow during the day yeah if you have any doubt about this or about section three or the midterm exam let me know and i will try to help you okay, and thanks. um we are going to finish right now with uh section two let's see uh previously we were talking about gerunds what is a gerund, right? Uh, ing words that they work as as nouns, right? And we have different verbs, right? After some verbs, uh, we have to write a gerund. So that is something that is like a rule, right? We have a long list of verbs. I will share this information with you today. So you can check all of the verbs. And we were focusing only um, with the verb need and with the verb keep, right? After those verbs, we have to write a uh, gerund. And we have some uh, examples here, like for example, the battery needs replacing, right? And my cell phone keeps freezing. And also um, need plus passive infinity, right? The walls need to be painted. That is just to fix some things. We check different examples also with gerund in need, with need in passive infinitive, and also keep plus gerund. So we covered that. Now we are going to check this one, right? This was the last part of, um, I'm gonna be listening teacher, I'm sick. Okay, it seems that everybody is sick right now, right? But hopefully you're going to be better for a uh, next class, okay? Because next class we will, we will need to, um, speak a little bit, but it's okay. If you are sick, no problem. Just let me know. So we have passive with prepositions. We have present continuous, passive and present perfect passive. So we are going to talk about passive, right? Passive voice. What is passive? Who knows that? What is passive voice? Who knows that? ¿Qué es la voz pasiva in English? What is passive? No ideas? Uh, when the, when the uh -huh. object is in the, in, in the end, if for when, example, mm -hmm. for example, uh, I, uh, you use, you use the verb in, 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 in pass, mm -hmm. in, in, in pass part, in, in pass uh, participle. Mm -hmm. But you use to the end, for example, you use the verb like a, like a, a subject. I mean, a subject. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is it is made, for example, 
it um, this house this house or this this home what uh, i don't know I, I don't remember exactly but it's something that the the verb in past participle is in the end but the verb is usually like a like a not like a verb just like an a subject i don't know okay the, very good very good thank you Elio, for yes something like that thank you for your participation normally when we speak we we speak in active voice right normally Normalmente nosotros hablamos en voz activa. When we say, for example, uh, Marvin is um, is feeding the dog, for example, right? So Marvin is feeding the dog. Or when I say Nady is writing a book, right? That is active, right? Nady is writing a book. So that is uh, active, right? That is active voice. But the opposite is passive, right? Passive voice, passive. When um, the important thing is not the doer of the action, but the action is the important thing. In the active voice, for example, if I say, Nady writes a book, who is the important part of the sentence? Nady, right? Because I'm talking about Nady. Nady writes a book. Nady escribe un libro, right? So Nady is the important part. But in the passive voice, the important thing is the action, right? Like Elius was saying the verb, right? So the action is important. Who is receiving the action? In this case, if I say Nady writes a book, the book, right? The book. A book is written by Nady. So Nady goes into a second place, goes at the end of the sentence, right? So um, so I say uh, the book is written. So is written, I use the verb to be. And the past participle, we already know what a past participle is, to create the past voice. So the important thing here is uh, who receives the action and the action itself. Sometimes we, we, we use the passive voice, for example, when uh, we try to explain something very formal or in books, right? We can find a lot of passive voice because it's a formal um text let's say right algo formal como libros formales libros academics academic books that's where we find the passive voice but when we speak like that sometimes we use it sometimes uh we don't but we don't use it very often now we are going to talk about the present continuous and the present perfect you already know this right the present continuous is with the ing right i am running i am playing video games ing right she is uh, doing exercise, something that is happening right now, right? And the present perfect, we, are, we, are, we already know, right? I have been here, I have done the homework, something that something that happened, and it's still relevant, right? You already know these tenses. So we are going to use it, but in passive, right? Present continuous passive and present perfect passive. So that that's it. You already checked this information in the platform if you saw the videos and everything. And this is just uh, the formula, right? Subject plus is, are, being plus past participle. Examples. Too many trees are being cut down right now or these days, right? Too many trees are being, right? Are being, are is the verb to be and being is the ing right the ing of this uh present continuous and then cut down right cut down is the past participle so too many trees are being cut down right now or water is being contaminated water is being contaminated as you can see in these examples we can find these structures for example in news right because news are very formal noticias verdad cuando damos las noticias es algo bien formal es algo serio so it's something that we can listen to the present continuous in a passive way in these uh, scenarios right and this is the present perfect passive uh, this is the formula to create sentences in affirmative way subject plus has or have depending on the subject right being plus past participle example too many trees have been cut down recently 
or too many trees have been cut down in the last year. Muchos árboles han sido cortados. Así se traduce. Han sido cortados. Han sido, ¿verdad? O ha sido. Así se traduce esto. And the present continues. Too many trees are being cut down. Están siendo cortados, ¿verdad? Are being. Están siendo, ¿ok? So that is the way that we uh, translate. When we want to say that something está haciendo o está pasando, o cuando el, el present perfect, ¿verdad? Han sido, ¿verdad? O ha sido. O algo que ha ocurrido. So, subject, uh, that, that is the present perfect passive. That is the difference and that's the way we translate. Also, we have prepositions because we use prepositions sometimes about uh, in these uh, sentences. We, we have by, because of, as a result of, due to, and through. Do you have any question about these prepositions? By, because of, as a result, due to, through. Do you have any question about that or do you understand all of them? Due to? Uh -huh. What is due to? Due to is debido a, right? Debido a. For example, if I say too many trees have been, have been cut down uh, recently due to, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, the government is building many houses, for example. Debido a, muchos árboles están siendo cortados debido a que eh, están construyendo muchas casas, right? They are building many houses. So debido a, due to, right? Another one. The last one. Through. Through, yes. for example, uh, through in this case is a través de, right? Through. O mediante. Puede ser mediante o a través de. Another one. Teacher, este, eh, because of también se puede traducir como debido a, ¿verdad? Yes, debido a, debido a. Con do, do it to. Do to, right. Es debido a o gracias a esto, ¿verdad? Gracias a esto o por esto, ¿verdad? Por esto. Entonces, uh, we have, you can use this kind of prepositions. Example, we have here, too many trees have been come down because of overbuilding, right? Because of, debido a o por overbuilding. Overbuilding is uh, that we build a lot of, uh, a lot of buildings, right? Sobre construir, ¿verdad? So that is overbuilding. These prepositions have similar meanings. So many of them have a similar meaning. They are like synonyms. We can use um, any of them uh, in, in, in this kind of situation. Podemos usar cualquiera de esas um, en estas situaciones, en estos ejemplos. So review on active and passive sentences. Um, that's, that, this is what I was explaining before, and this is in the platform also. And this is the active voice, and we normally speak in active voice. Air pollution is threatening the health of people. This is the cause, right? This is the subject, this is the verb, and this is the object. And passive voice, we change everything, right? The health of people changes and is the subject. And then mm, air pollution is... Uh, the doer, right? So the doer is not important here in passive, in passive voice. The health of people is being threatened by air pollution. So you see, this is active and this is passive. The receiver of the action is the important in passive voice, not who does the action. That is the difference. So you already know this. Um, we have a listening here to listen a little bit of examples how we can use these structures, right? How we can use it, how we are going to check also a lot of vocabulary today. So we are going to listen to this uh, very quickly. Let's see here. And we are going to see here, this is about a listening to announcement from an election. Unit seven, company. what can we do? Let's see here. It says, listen to an announcement from an election campaign. What kind of problems does Grace Medina want to fix? So this is like, um, a mayor, right? A mayor, a campaign, right? So this is for city council, para la alcaldía. So she is trying to fix things or problems 
in the city, right? For example, our fresh water supply is being contaminated by toxic chemicals. The roads aren't being repaired due to lack of funding. Our community center has been closed because of high maintenance costs. Our city streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Many public parks have been lost through overbuilding. Low-income families are being displaced from their homes due to high rental prices. And these are some of the problems of the city. So she is like the mayor, or she she wants to win the election for uh, being a mayor of the city council. Para ser la alcaldesa, verdad? So let's listen to this. And we are going to see how she uses the passive voice. Let's see, let me find it here. And let me know if you're able to listen to it. Let me see here. Yes, I think this listening, oh, it's here. Okay, perfect, it's here. So let me know if you're able to listen to it, okay? Do. Page 44, okay. exercise okay. two. Perspective. Yes, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perspectives. Vote for a better city. Part A. Listen to an announcement from an election campaign. What kinds of problems does Grace Medina want to fix? Vote for Grace Medina for City Council. Grace Medina's ideas for Riverside. Have you noticed these problems in our city? Our fresh water supply is being contaminated by toxic chemicals. The roads aren't being repaired due to a lack of funding. Our community center has been closed because of high maintenance costs. Our city streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Many public parks have been lost through overbuilding. Low-income families are being displaced from their homes due to high rental prices. Grace Medina, the change we need. Perfect. Now we have uh, listened to these uh, sentences. Actually, this, all of these are uh, present continuous, right? Is being, are in being. This one is uh, present perfect, has been. This is present continuous, are being, have been is present perfect. And the last one is present continuous, right? Are being displaced, but all of them are in passive. Todas están en voz pasiva, all of them, right? So uh, these are some things that probably we have in our city. Some of the problems, for example, fresh water. Not all of our cities have like water, right? Uh, also the roads, right? Some of them needs to be repaired and um, many problems, right? So we are going to talk about problems around the city right now. Let's see. Uh, these are some examples that we have here about the present continuous uh, in passive voice and present perfect in passive voice. Let's see, I want just one sentence, only one sentence in present continuous with passive. Now that we have seen a lot of uh, examples. Now, can you can somebody give me one sentence with present continuous but in passive? Present continuous for in passive can be a problem in your city or any any example. A volunteer, only one one sentence present continuous passive. Volunteers? Let me try. Okay, very good, Elio. <laughs> uh, there are, mm -hmm. there are, uh, there are, uh, uh, there are there are going mm -hmm. go there are going to to 
visited, visited, visited mm -hmm. the the house of the the house of the veteran. Okay. So probably here here is they are right they they are going to visit the house of the veteran in this case it will be busy right not visited they are going to visit the house of the veteran very good perfect this is active voice right active, but yes. we can we can transform it into passive right in this case uh the doer is they right the person or the people who are going to visit the house of the veteran. So uh, who is receiving the visit? The house of the veteran. So this one will be. The house of the veteran will uh -huh. be visited. Will be visited, exactly, will be visited, exactly. And this will be in passive voice, right? Visited, will be visited by, I don't know, by, the students let's say or by them right by, by them, them or by the students right but the doer here remember that the doer is not important we can uh, place it here and if we don't know it it's okay so the how of the house of the veteran will be visited this will is future right future with will but in this case i want present continuous so in this case uh, uh as we can see here the this is the structure, subject plus is or are, right? Is or are. So in this case, the house is, right? The house is? Is. Mm -hmm. Is being? Is being, exactly. Is being, you see? So that's the reason why I I explained this at, at first. Is being and then past participle visited, right? Yes. Basically, perfect. You see, so we need to follow the structure. That's why I, I explained this at the beginning. And if we follow the structure, that's it. We are able to create different sentences. The house of the veteran is being visited. Now, I want a sentence with present perfect passive. Let's see here. The masks have been withdrawn for the comfort of the population. Very good, Elizabeth. Very good. The mass. This is, uh, this is a uh, present perfect passive. Correct. The masks have been withdrawn for the comfort of the population the must have been withdrawn for the comfort of the population let's see the structure let's see the structure again for um present perfect passive subject the mask right then has or have let's see have and then been and then the past participle let's see being and past participle, correct. So this is a very good uh, sentence. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your participation. As you can see, if we follow the structures or this formula, we can create a sentence. So you can review that to create more sentences. Now, uh, this is the passive with preposition. We have more examples here. If you need more examples, you necesita más ejemplos. Se lo vamos a dar en este momento. Si tienen preguntas después de estos ejemplos o durante yo los explico, me pueden parar y me pueden decir, teacher, I don't understand. Please repeat, please. Okay, so this is passive with prepositions. As you can see before, we studied prepositions. And see, it says here, you can use present continuous passive with preposition to describe problems that are happening and what is causing them. And you can use present perfect passive with prepositions to describe problems and what caused them. And we have more examples here, right? With a present continuous passive, the air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. And present perfect passive, 
many green areas have been lost through overbuilding. As you can see, we have here uh, the first example, the first sentence, fumes for, from cars and trucks, and this is overbuilding, right? Overbuilding. And this is, uh, again, the structures, right? Uh, let's see. Um, Mayra Portillo, are you there? Can you hear me, Mayra Portillo? Yes, no? Okay, let's see another person. Are you there, Sulma? Sulma is here. Are you able to, to see the sentences, Sulma? Yes. Can you read the sentences, please? Just to check the examples with present continuous passive, please. Okay. Many airports are being closed because of COVID-19. Uh, uh, people are being... I see evidence. Being. Being. Uh, being. Pe people are being infected as, as a result of not wearing a mask. Many types of fish are being poisoned through mm -hmm. oil spill. Mm -hmm. The three are not being prepared due, due to a lack of funding. Mm -hmm. Our planet is being harmed by people's bad habits. Very good. Thank you, Suma, for your participation. These are present continuous in passive, right? Uh, sentences. So as we can see, we have here the verb to be, is or are, being, then the past participle in purple, preposition because of, as a result of, through, due to, by, we can use any of them. And then the cause of the problem. You can see here the structure. And if you follow this structure, you are not going to lose any, any of the words, important words, right? Or the order. Uh, do you have any question about any word that you don't know? Preguntas acerca del nuevo vocabulario? Questions? No what questions? Uh-huh. What is the meaning? Spills. spills. Oil spills. Oil spills, spills, as we can see here, um, many types of fish are being poisoned through oil spills. This one, as we can see here in the picture, is a lot of oil, petróleo, right? And spills, derrame. So, derrame de petróleo, oil spills. And many, many uh, fish are being poisoned through oil spills. Another one? What is the meaning of harm? What is the meaning of? Harmed. The and last one. Is, the last one. Our planet is being harmed by people's bad habits. Um, our planet is being harmed. What is harm? Harm is dañino, algo que daña, right? So being harmed, está siendo dañado. Our planet is being harmed by people's bad habits. And we can see that the world is burning, right? Because of overheating. Another one, or that's it? That's it? Okay, perfect. So this is the present continuous in passive. And this is the present perfect in passive, right? We have here uh, what is effective, like the subject, then have or has, been, past participle, preposition in green, right? And the cause of the problem or complement. Now let's see, Hilda, are you there, Hilda? Yes. Can you read the, the examples, please? Well, sorry. Yes, the sentences. Are you able to see the sentences? Ah, some, some rivers have been contaminated by big factories. Mm -hmm. A lot of trees, uh, <laughs> a lot of trees have been destroyed because the wildfires. Mm 
-hmm. Many new signs, the signs have been closer due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The street has been damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Many homes have been lost through natural disasters. Very good. Thank you, Hilda. Okay, so some rivers have been contaminated by big factories, right? Some rivers. So we can see here the picture, right? The river is being contaminated. A lot of trees have been destroyed because of wildfires. These are fires that are caused in, in the forest, right? Uh, many business businesses have been closed due to the pandemic. The streets have been damaged as a result of heavy traffic and many homes have been lost through natural disasters. Do you have any question about these sentences or about these uh, words? Any new words? Alguna palabra que no conozcan? No? Factories, wildfire. Uh -huh. Wildfires es incendios. Incendio forestal, exactly. Wildfire. Es un incendio forestal because nobody causes it, right? It just, it creates by itself or, or because it's really hot. So it, it starts just like that. And, and it's really big in forests, in some areas, not here probably, but in some other countries, there are a lot of wildfires. Another one, pandemic, heavy traffic, natural disasters, all of them. Okay, so no questions. We are going to continue. Now, uh, probably we are going to do this at the end. Let's see if we still have time. And we have a conversation. Let's see. Uh, we are, I want you to practice the conversation just to check the pronunciation. And then we are going to check the um, these, uh, let's see, these exercises or these words. And at the end, infinitive clauses and phrases, right? That was that will be the, the last one. So we are going to check this conversation right now. It's a conversation about these kind of problems, right? Uh, contamination and all of that. And we are going to listen into it. And then uh, we are going to practice it. Los que están enfermos o los que no pueden encender el Hello micrófono, pues entonces no lo seven. vamos a hacer. What can we do? No, no lo vamos a practicar, ¿ok? Entonces vamos a hacer uh, eh, nada más um, in purse. We are going to practice this in purse. Let's see here. Just let me find the audio here. Here it is. Okay, we are going to listen to the conversation first, ¿ok? This is a conversation between two people talking about water pollution. Let's listen to them. Page 47. Exercise 7. Conversation. What if it doesn't work? Part A. Listen and practice. Did you hear about the dead fish that were found floating in the Bush River this morning? Yeah, I read something about it. You know what happened? Well... There's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one way to change things is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a news station to run a story on it. Yes. Companies hate bad publicity. By the way, What's the name of this company? Believe it or not, it's called Green Mission Industries. Really? My uncle is one of their top executives. Perfect. Now, um, we are going to read a sentence by sentence here. And if you have any question, let me know, okay? It says, did you hear about the dead fish that were found floating in the Bosch River this morning? Yeah, I read something about it. Do you know what happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. 
How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one way to change things is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a news station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? Believe it or not, it's called Green Mission Industries. Really? My uncle is one of their top executives. Do you have any question about any word that you don't know or the pronunciation? You know everything and the pronunciation, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah. What does it mean when, when Cindy says, mm -hmm. the, then another way to stop them is to get a news stations. Mm -hmm. I would mean news as a, as a, as a, as a um, oh yeah, I understood. It because I thought that what it's a build a new station. <laughs> no, it's but to it, get. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, to get a new station. Yes, to get a new yeah. station like Quatrovision, right? Yes. Or Tele2, right? It's like get a new station to run a story on it. Very good, perfect, Ilyu. Another, uh, do you have any other question or anybody has another question about pronunciation or meaning? No questions? Okay, we are going to practice just to check the pronunciation, okay? Let's see. Um, volunteers, I need two volunteers. Dos voluntarios. Me? Okay, okay who said me? Me too. Me? Rodrigo, yep. did you say? And who else? Hilda. 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 Okay, Rodrigo, do you want to participate? Yes. Okay, so first, uh, Hilda and Rodrigo, and then Elio, okay, with another person. Okay, very good. Uh, go ahead, Sandra, uh, sorry, Hilda and Rodrigo, please. Okay. Did you hear about the delfish that were found floating in the Bush right River this morning? Yeah, I read something about it. Do you know what happened? Well, the factory of the town that's pump, pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one way to change the things is to talk to the company's magnum. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a new station to run our story now. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? Believe it or not, it's called Green Mission Industries. Really? My uncle is one of their top execu executives. Very good, very good, perfect, perfect, very good, perfect. Let's see, remember that when we listen to a conversation, uh, let's try to imitate what they say, right? Very good, Hilda, and very good, Rodrigo. You, you, you did it very well, the pronunciation was really good. But remember also intonation, right? For example, when it's a, a, a question, for example, uh, did you hear about the fish that were found floating in the Bosch River this morning, right? Like intonation when it is a question, right? Uh, okay, Sandra, do you want to participate? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, Sandra. And Eliu is going to help you 
Elio, are you ready? Ready. Okay, so yes. uh, you begin, Sandra, and then Elio. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Did you hear about the dead fish that were found floating in the Bush River this morning? Yeah, I read something about it. Do you know what happened? Well, there is factory outside towns that's popping chemicals into the river. River. How, how can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one way to change things is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't, it doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a new station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? Believe it or not, it's called Ding Mission Industries. Really? My uncle is one of their top executives. Very good, very good, perfect, perfect. A better intonation, very good, perfect. So let's see, I have two questions. Uh, let's see, what is chemicals? What is this? It says, Cindy, well, there's a factory I saw, uh, outside towns that's pumping chemicals. What is chemicals? Chemicals. 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 chemicals, very chemicals. good, chemicals. So it's chemicals, very good. And another one, what is the meaning of companies management? What is that? Companies management. The director of the company? The director of the company? And how do you translate in, in Spanish? How do you translate that in Spanish? Los, los gerentes, los, los directores de la compañía. Very good, very good. La gerentes o la administración, right? Management, administración. Companies management, la administración de la compañía. Los gerentes, right? So administración, management, companies, management. Really good, perfect, perfect, very good. So uh, we are going to continue uh, practicing with more conversations in the future, but we are going to do something different with uh, future conversations that we have prepared. Now we are going to continue and we are going to finish this class. I want to explain really quickly um, uh, this exercise. Like this is just grammar, just in case that you have any, any question, you already studied this in the platform. So this is just infinitive clauses and phrases. An infinitive clause is this, right? The, the first part here is a clause and it's infinitive because there is an infinitive here. To do is an infinitive, to stop is an infinitive, to fight is another infinitive. So as we can see here, we have a lot of infinitives here, right? In this conversation, uh, for example, uh, one way to change thing is to talk to the company's management. So the, there is an infinitive phrase there, an infinitive clause and an infinitive phrase. Uh, so this is the, uh, the difference between clauses and phrases. What is the difference between clause and phrase? Clause, in clauses, we can include a, a subject and a verb. So that is a clause. An infinitive clause includes a subject and a verb. In a phrase, we don't have a subject and we don't have a verb. We don't have subjects or we don't have verbs. So that is a phrase. So as, as we can see here, we have, we use it uh, for, uh, provide examples or so to provide uh, resol resolutions, right, to some problems. And we have examples here, right? One thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management, right? So we have a clause, an infinitive clause, and an infinitive phrase. Another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story, an infinitive clause, and an infinitive phrase. And the best way to fight HIV or AIDS are to do more research and educate people. We have clauses and phrases. 
in here we have um this is just the the formula right the structure one way the infinitive is r and another infinitive an infinitive phrase right one way to help the homeless is to build more public housing so this is just for you to to identify or you can start identifying these infinitive clauses and infinitive phrases right in case that you you have any doubt or any question about it and we can find it here and we are going to finish this class with uh this um vocabulary i have a question go ahead elizabeth yes um cuál sería la interpretación de to run a story porque así traducirlo normalmente se escucha como raro pero... exactly yes exactly remember that we can translate some things right but in english they have expressions or phrases um, that they are already like that, right? Uh, so when we try to translate, we need to find the meaning, right? To run is ejecutar, to run. No, it can be ejecutar uh, in, in this context, right? O puede ser eh, para, que, para que reporten la historia, right? So we can translate it in that way. No van a correr la historia, no correr, no, sino que van a ejecutarla o la van a, a, a publicar to run a story. So in this case, that would be the context. We need to also learn how to translate, but it depends on the context. So in this case, no es correr, sino que es como ejecutar o crear para que ellos proyecten la historia, para que la gente la, la sepa. So that is the meaning of to run a story in this context, okay? Very good question, Elizabeth. Very good. Perfect. Uh, do you have any other questions? More questions about this? Yo, eh, sería uh -huh. como correr un rumor o algo así. Ajá, como hacer para que hagan una historia. Uh, uh, sería, por ejemplo, una vez, uh, otra manera de pararlos es traer una estación de noticias para que hagan la historia, para que hagan un reportaje. Esa sería la manera de traducirlo. That would be the way to translate it. No correr un rumor, sino que, que creen la historia, que hagan un reportaje, to run a story. Okay. Okay, very good. Very good. Perfect, very good. Another question about that? Okay, now we have a little bit more of uh, vocabulary because I want you to use this vocabulary. We have a lot of problems in our society, in our city, in the world, right? But, but we are trying to fix all of them. <laughs> Probably one day we will try, we will, we will find the solution for all of them. We have unemployment. Unemployment is the state of not having a job and not being able to find one. For example, unemployment is a serious problem in this country. There aren't many jobs. Unemployment, right? Another one is famine. That is the pronunciation, famine. A time or situation in which there isn't enough food for a great number of people. A lot of people in Africa are dying of famine. What is the meaning of famine in Spanish? ¿Qué significa Ambruna. famine? In Ambruna, very good, famine. So that is, it's not famine, no, famine, famine, okay? Global warming, right? An increase in world temperatures caused by gases such as carbon dioxide. The destruction of the rainforest is contributing to global warming. That is another problem that we have. Government corruption, right? Abuse of public power, office, or resources by elected government officials for personal gain. The president was accused of government corruption. So corruption, government corruption is another problem. Infectious diseases, right? Like COVID, right? COVID-19 is an infectious disease. Infectious diseases are diseases caused by living organisms like viruses and bacteria. Hepatitis A and B 
are infectious diseases pass from person to person. Political unrest. Political unrest, what is that? Riots, general strikes, and anti-government demonstration because of dissatisfaction about something. There have been many political unrests in Latin America. So that is political unrest. That will be like, let's see here, inestabilidad política, that is the meaning in Spanish. Unrest es que no descansa, right? But as I said before, there are terms that um, cannot be translated literally, no los traducimos literalmente, sino que significan en español otra cosa. So political unrest es inestabilidad política. Poverty. Poverty, it's uh, the condition of being extremely poor, right? He grew up in poverty, pobreza. So poverty is like this picture, right? Poverty. Recession, right? Recession, that's another problem that we have right now. It seems that we have all of the problems nowadays, but it says, it says here, a period when the economy of a country is not successful and conditions for businesses are bad. Example, a lot of companies have been affected by recession. Violence, right? Another problem, violence. Actions or words that are intended to hurt people or cause damage. She was concerned about the amount of violence on television. Also, um, another thing is, uh, another problem that is related to violence is domestic violence, right? Violencia domestica, that is another problem. Domestic violence. And cancer, right? A serious disease that is caused when cells in the body grow in a way that is uncontrolled and not normal, killing normal cells and often causing death. Amelia is a cancer survivor. Uh, drug trafficking, that's another one. The act of cultivating, manufacturing, distributing, and selling prohibited uh, drugs. People can spend two, three to five years in prison for drug trafficking. Inflation, a general continuous increase in prices. The government has been unable to control inflation. Overpopulation, right? We are now 80, like 80 million, something like that, of population, right? So having too many people for the amount of food, materials, and space available in a country or a city. India is looking for ways to combat overpopulation. And those will be some of the problems that we have. Any question? about any of the words, overpopulation, inflation, drug trafficking, cancer, violence, recession, poverty, political unrest, infectious diseases, government corruption, global warming, famine, unemployment. Any, any doubt, any question? In political unrest, mm -hmm. it is a word that is riots. Riots. Is? What does riots mean? This unrest. Word. Or what? No, riots. R riots. I riots. Yes. Riots. Riot is, for example, what they are doing, but in a very violent way. Riot says disturbios. Okay. Riots, right? Strikes also. Strike is something that is a political unrest. It's a way of political unrest. Son como huelgas. Strikes. Okay. okay so riots, okay. disturbios strikes huelgas another question no more questions okay now homework for tomorrow um now i want you to prepare we have a presentation uh you are going to present the news tomorrows you can choose any of these topics you can choose global warming famine government corruption and you are, I, I don't want you to, to present like a long story, que no sea tan larga, just a little bit, right? But try to use the vocabulary that we 
uh, practice today, for example, infinitive clauses and phrases, and also this one, person perfect passive, and also um, present continuous in passive, right? Try to use this, uh, just a little report, como una pequeña noticia para mañana. Or, or if you if you don't want to look for news, si no quieren buscar una noticia, a problem, right? A problem that you think that is happening in your city, a problem that you have in your house, a problem like, for example, um, any of, of those problems that we check today, inflation, right? Or if you want to comment in one of these, try to do it. Uh, write it if you want to, and then you are going to present it tomorrow. Mañana presentan ese problema o esa noticia, okay? Try to look short. It's, it's going to be short, so try to be short, but uh, try to use this vocabulary, okay? That will be the homework for tomorrow. It says investigate about news around the world or a problem in your community. Try to write it in English with your own words. Utilicen sus propias palabras. Traten de escribirlas para ustedes, como que ustedes la están diciendo. Use infinitive clauses and phrases and present perfect passive and present continuous. So that will be um, the work or the homework for tomorrow, okay? And I will share this with you today. Do you have any question or any doubt? Preguntas? No questions, preguntas del homework, question of the homework, about the homework. Okay. No question. No, no questions. Question. Okay. Remember tomorrow, a little new or a little problem in your community or society that you want to share with us, that you want to share your point of view and try to use the grammar. And if you are sick or if you have any problem with your camera, let me know before. So I will know that you have a problem, right? Trying to... That's the reason why you, you cannot connect or you cannot present. But this is a way to practice your English, right? Try to use your own words and the words that you are learning. So I will uh, uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a nice night and thank you for being here, okay? Hey. Thank you. Have a nice night.